This is the YouTube channel. I'm sorry, the uh, Twitch channel, for anybody that's curious. Alright, shut that off. Alright, I think we should be pretty good to go. Uh, do I have any people in here that I can unmute? Yeah, sure. We can unmute Lemur. We can help out if you'd like. Um, who else? Nose is cool, but he's usually muted anyway. Um, I think we're pretty good to go. If more people come in, we can uh, we can deal with them as they come. Okay. Welcome, guys, to Primitive Painting, Class 4. Good to see you all. What is the purpose of this class? Very simple. The purpose of the class is to be able to light things from imagination at our own whimsy, at our own will, at our own discretion. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be combining all of the information that we've received in the first three weeks, because the first three weeks, for those that were not in attendance, were mostly concerned with being able to paint the most primitive aspects of painting. Let me put in some gorgeous homework done by some of your, your peers here. Uh, so here's like Ray Ray, and she did a bunch of spheres for us, which are pretty goddamn cool. We have Belgian dude here that did a bunch of cubes, if I can find them. I guess I can't find them, but you gotta just take my take my word for it. I'll find another person. There you go. It's a bunch of cubes done by again just by people like you, people that are kind of new to new to this, and it's very 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 easy with a simplized simple simplified workflow. To achieve a decent result so the last week and we'll go through the homework at the end of the class as per usual uh, the last week I asked you to do cylinders and asked you to do cones so that's what we did and I think everybody did a pretty good job especially after spheres I think cylinders and cones are a step back so there's some pretty solid work in the homework pile I don't think I'll have very much to say about um, trying to improve them so you guys did really good so the ultimate question that we always ask in this class is, what's the point of all of this stuff? And I think that's something that most classes that teach this kind of thing sort of fail at a little bit, because they're not entirely sure, uh, they're not very convincing when it comes to why on earth do I want to paint cylinders and cubes when what I want to paint is dragons and monsters and creatures and humans. So let's recap before we go anywhere, any, any, any further, let's go ahead and just quickly summarize what we already learned. Okay, so here's the recap. Order of importance. What is the first and most important thing with painting? If you said drawing, you're correct, because even though all of us love putting paint on canvas and love finding that right shape and that right, right value, it turns out that unless you have a good crucible in which to pour your values into, nobody's going to be very convinced with what you just did. Now, here's a very clear example, right? If I did a cylinder and it was really wonky, it doesn't really matter how good the internals are if I wanted to think of this in my head people are just gonna see this no matter how good that rendering is so it turns out that drawing or the overall proportions this outside contour really really important to be able to convey what you want to convey and that's why everybody says oh you want to be a painter all right pick up a pencil start drawing what you see because drawing is ultimately you're defining the outside contours of something right you're saying okay this is the space that you occupy in all sorts of sketching, we are concerned with ideas like mass and form. Mass being the space occupied and form being how it's occupied. And a lot of drawing is going to deal exactly with these two topics, right? And I'm not going to get into drawing as a subject. This is almost a requisite for my class. Okay, but where does my class step in? Well, here's exactly why we should also learn how to do stuff with value. Because I ask you a simple question. What is the inside of this particular triangle? And for those of you that take my class before, you've already know this answer. There is no answer because we haven't clarified in the very slightest, because this could be easily a flat plane, or it could be an infinitely crazy hole that's tearing into my canvas, the void of space before our very eyes. It could be just a simple polygon, it could be um, a pyramid, right? Or a four-sided prism pointed towards us. But what am I doing here? I'm describing the internal form inside this external mass, right? Very simple. And I can do a certain amount of this stuff with my lines, but there's only so much you can do, right? If I consider something like a nose, which is a complex shape, right? When you draw a nose in your character, do you do something like this, where you draw every single edge, and you say, okay, that's what I need? Or would you do something like this, where you would draw the bottom, right? And maybe a little bit of the car shadow on, on below? You do something like this, right? So why is this superior to this? Is because this is much closer to how we perceive reality. 
we don't perceive reality in terms of lines we perceive them in terms of value so this is the bridge that we need because we, unless we know this it's hard to do this because ultimately and we'll come back to this in a second ultimately it's all about plane and contour so let's just say i want to draw something from imagination i want to be able to render something from just the, the fathoms of my brain you know the, from the Annals of my brain, I want to be able to draw something and render it. So I draw it first. And this is important because this is where all of your design, this is where all of your ideas, all of your perspective, all those fundamentals are keying in right over here. Okay? Drawing really, really important. Do not understate because this is a list in terms of priority. So if this is wrong, everything's going to be wrong. Number two, next step is always going to be your contour step. This might be a little bit confusing for people that are not familiar with my method, but Ultimately, this is really important because this is what I call an additional step. If you are more of a beginner, you're more likely going to be using this step. If you're less of a beginner, you just skip this step because you already know it in your head. What does this mean? This means that if I show you an ambiguous form, or an ambiguous mass rather, I can convince you about its form without painting by just adding contour or adding lines or adding planes. It's just as simple as what it is, right? Because we introduced the plane concept in the last class. So, how do I do that? Well, let's go ahead and draw some lines across. And then suddenly you see what I see, don't you? Because again, you're looking at these these rounded forms and you say, Oh, you know what? I kind of get it, you know? Could you clarify more? Oh, of course I can. Sure, let's clarify more. What if I do this? What if I do this? Now you're starting to see, right? It's almost like a 3D program and drawing a grid over things. And this is awesome. This is really, really important. Because what this is telling me, it's giving me topographical information about what I have just drawn. Because ultimately, you saw what I draw initially? You don't really know what that is in space, but the second I do this, it's clarified, it's clear, it's certain. Because that is just the idea of contouring. Now, contouring in a, in a vacuum in terms of definition, it's simply being able to define the way that a plane changes its orientation as it moves through space, right? So. Or you can just think about it in simpler terms. If I was just to put a string on top of the object, how would that string bevel? How would that string curve? How would it sit on top of an object? That is the contour. Very, very simple, right? But and if you can contour something, you can light it. Number three, you got to pick your shape. Okay, so in order to do this, we need some help. So we need to know where the light is positioned. So light source. So I'll pick a light source, let's just say up in the sky, up in the heavens, and it projects down. And now this is the, the clinching point, right? This is the uh, one of the final decisions you're gonna make when painting something, because painting is almost automatic to a certain extent. You just have to make some big decisions. So the big decision you're making over here is you're saying, okay, where on earth does this whole array of planes point away from my light source right you might have been familiar with the words terminator before the um the plane that's turning away the half tone mid tone you, you probably know some of these terms they all relate to how the planes or how these particular contour lines are facing away or towards the light okay so if the light's up here i can kind of imagine that this plane is facing away so as a gross kind of over complication we can just say that okay from here you're facing away so if from here you're facing away, that means that this ultimately is going to be our shadow shape. And you have to realize that this is independent of value, okay? So we haven't even talked about the value just yet. This is, this is a separate system that we have for that. But this is really important. The shape determines almost as much as the drawing. Because again, the shape in real life, because in real life we don't have the benefit of contours. So what's going to happen in real life is that all of this stuff is erased and we look at this thing over here and we say okay now i see what it is now i kind of know what you're talking about so if you do a bad job with this your communication gets completely demolished How can i show that to you of course so let's grab it. Uh, my classic example again always good to keep that in your mind if i tell you hey i'm gonna give you a couple of spheres i'm gonna ask you to tell me which one's more spherical sounds simple cool let's do it so over here sphere number one we just do bam and sphere number two we do this Good little note for me to turn off the pressure on my pen. Okay, we're good. So sphere number two, we do that. And then I, it's a simple question. What looks more round? And obviously it's this one. Why? It's because the shape 
takes into consideration the spherical nature of the contour, right? It's very simple. So this is a really, really important thing. And if you're going to leave my class right now, this is probably going to benefit your work significantly because this is a very common mistake in most people's work when they put the shadow and they think, okay, just put the shadow in, blam. All that matters is that it's the right value, but no, because it has to be the right shape. Otherwise it's not convincing. Shape theory, shape definitions. These are really, really complex subjects. But all that I care about, all that you should care about for the intents and purposes of this class is just be, be very attentive, be very vigilant when it comes to speaking your exact shape, okay? It has to respect the contour. And it's made a lot easier for us, right? Because we have the extra step of actually drawing the contour or thinking about it so that these shapes are becoming a little bit more obvious to us. Okay, so let's speed through this again. Shape's really important. I think we all can understand that. Let's go next. Number four, I have drawn it, I have contoured it, and through that I have found the shape using the direction of my lights. What's next? I have to apply my shadow. Shadow, again, we use the halfway to black principle. If you're curious about that, quick little demo on that. If I have a value like this, I want to find the value in the shadow, this exact value. What is it in the shadow? It's this. I take this current value. I take the distance from here all the way to absolute black and I cut it in two. And what I end up with is a very naturally contrasting value. You can do it for almost anything. Here's another value and here is its corresponding shadow. Now this is just a starting point. It's just something that will give you enough of a contrast for it to be comfortably considered to be shadow. It by no means solves all of your shadow problems. It's just a starting point. So in lighting things with imagination, I will oftentimes resort to things like this, these little shorthands, these little techniques, just to be able to be assured that I will always have shadow when I want shadow. So all of these things over here, if I grab the value in the light, if um, Krita is going to respond to me, I put the value in the dark, you see that? Halfway, right? Again, not necessarily something that's going to be strongly considered to be a strong rule of any sort, but you're going to get the idea, right? halfway basically everywhere that's a comfortable shadow a lot of theory behind halfway to black if you'd like to know more about why it's halfway you know what variations can i do i really encourage you to read the scott robertson book on the subject i think it's awesome it's scott robertson how to draw i'm sorry how to render how to render that's the book that it's from i encourage you to do some research okay let's go back to this little fellow over here right so let's just say now we want to light this. I have picked my contour and I've picked my shape, but to shadow something, I need to do the exact same step I just showed you, which is I need to define this particular plane in the light, or this particular object in the light. So this is one of the few decisions you actually make, which is, okay, I'm going to say that is going to be this value in the light. Okay. And then corresponding to that, I can just pick the shadow value. So I just have to go halfway and that is going to be the shadow. Pretty comfortable, right? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay. So what have I done here? I have defined the shadow and this is part of what I call the one, two, three. One being light, three being shadow, two being half tone. Okay. We can actually add the half tone in here, which is the plane right before it hits shadow and again always have to respect that contour I always concern myself with that shape super super important right, that simple right and once you do your one two three read it's very 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 straightforward then it's just the idea of radiating it then it's just the idea of thinking about the edges we think about the cast shadow. We think about the ambient or tangential lights. We think about the specular. And we think about the floor and the background. These additional steps are not so important. We'll get into them later on. And I've already gone through everything in detail in my previous classes, if you'd like to see. But 
that is how you would finish this up but this until right now is the most important thing if you can do this all of the other stuff is completely trivial which is why once you define the shadow shapes and the essential one two three values for your piece i call that a solved piece in the sense that things are just very very straightforward very very automatic from right there okay so that's where we are at right now and it's really cool because you guys have done a really goddamn good job when it comes to all of your homework so everything that you've seen from your classmates they're doing exactly the same thing they're defining the contour they're using halfway to black you see that halfway to black very cool right they're putting the specular in they're putting the edge information in they're putting the highlight in they're putting the shadow in they're gradiating everything beautifully smoothly adding in that cast shadow adding in the occlusion adding in the tangential light and then finally they end up with a pretty solid decent looking uh, cylinder from imagination how cool is that so my class offers just a simple framework right a really really solid framework that if you follow the steps you will get a result and if you're not getting the result there's always a sub step you can add and i feel like i go more into the sub steps in the individual classes so i encourage you to watch it if you look at something like this and say i don't think i can do that you know james i'm gonna be honest i can't really do that it's fair but you can because anybody can it's just about following steps it's like cooking a cake right or baking a cake rather um this is about following the recipe and you'll be able to get a good result if we just stick to um stick to every step and then put some diligence into it okay so on to today's class because that's all that we've done already just a quick recap for people that are new here because i don't want to leave anybody in the dust all right so this should be pretty good so far if anybody has any questions now is a pretty good time i'm take a drink of water and they will continue with today's lesson it's gonna be really fun Oh, cool. Solus is in here. You can get unmuted Solus. There you go. Uh, Rue, you can get unmuted. There you go. Actually, no, your mic might echo. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape, right? Is using airbrushes to shad add shadows bad? I have a hard time gradating my values. I don't think airbrushes in anything except um i'm actually check that again um i don't think it's bad at all uh, the only thing that i'd concern myself with for the purposes of learning is try not to airbrush the actual contour of your objects i'm totally fine with you airbrushing these areas like the shadow uh, airbrushing the background airbrushing the the specular light and why i say this and again why they say oh you want to learn how to paint use a hard round brush is because I, i'm sure since you've done the homework quite diligently um you notice that if I have something like this, for example, well, maybe not this, maybe a sphere is better. So because you're using an airbrush or because you're using a round brush, you got to go around the contour at every single instant. You have to solve it. So you've been doing this for a while. And that's exactly what I want you to do, because this really ingrains the idea that shape is king, because you're constantly thinking about the contour at every single stage of your painting. Hopefully that makes sense. But if you feel comfortable at this point, and I feel like you should be because you've really been quite diligent with your homework, um, I don't think it's an issue for these more, for these larger paintings that we're going to get into. I think it's totally fine. Uh, it's totally fine to um, to use whatever you'd like. Um, because at this point, you've done the work, and I'm happy enough with the work, so it's totally fine. You can go ahead. Uh, I have Scott Robinson's book, What Should I Be Learning From It? For the purposes of this class, we are, I'm not sure which of the books you have, How to Draw or How to Render. Uh, those are all really good books, but How to Render, you should be trying to look for this principle. It's in the first few pages. It's halfway to black. That's the basic idea that I kind of teach in the class for you to be able to always have good contrasting shadows. It's a good thing to look at. Halfway to black. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape. Let's move on. So here's the first part of what I want you guys to do. Because remember, we can go back to our little checklist, right? What is the first thing when I want to paint something? Well, good goodness, I got to draw it. Uh, drawing is really hard, but we can manage it. So I want you guys for the homework, and this comes later on, but let's pick some references that we can start to kind of apply this knowledge in a much more realistic setting. So 
you'll find this again, I'll reiterate this in the homework, but I want you guys to find references like this, okay? Which are basically really simple things in nature. So already we're getting really fun because nature is really fun, right? Stuff like this. And what we're going to do, just to kind of give you a brief overview of what's going to happen, is we're going to extract the basic shapes from these complex creatures. And even though they're, they're, they're complex creatures, they're actually kind of simple. They're kind of cute. Look at them. So cute. Um, but we're going to be able to grab these shapes using our drawing skill. Okay. And we're going to sh shut the reference off completely. Reference gets turned off. And then we're going to light them from imagination. So see, I'm trying to allow you the opportunity to not have to think about the drawing so much, but still be able to apply the painting skill, right? That we've been learning all this time. So you're going to be simplifying stuff like this for me, and then we're going to be painting it from imagination. So I actually, I'm going to start demoing a couple of these right now. So we have these when I'll just do it on top. So I'll do this rather quickly, but I want just enough information in on screen so that you guys get what I'm talking about. So we're not just blanketing over this particular step because it is important. Okay, let's grab these guys. So this is one of the little bit more annoying parts of this whole course, I will say. And the only reason is because I can teach you how to value stuff really, really quickly um, and how to paint really quickly, but I can't teach you drawing um, because that's not my class, right? That's other people's classes. Uh, if it comes to the point where, it should, I don't really think it will because I think you guys are already pretty good. Um, but if it comes to the point where everybody's having a bit of an issue, I will take a full class just to help you with this with this particular subject but i think it'll be okay so first step cut the opacity okay and now all we want to do is extract those simple shapes so this requires a lot of knowledge with perspective and a lot of experience with drawing but i think you're going to be okay don't be too intimidated give it a shot so this is what i want from you i want you to separate every one of these references into multiple smaller primitives that are all separated it's important to me that they're separated i'll tell you why later but the idea is, is that, for example, I need not to be perfect with it. For example, we take the back here. I'll just draw maybe something like this. Right. And then we go back here. So pretty simple, right? Pretty simple, pretty not intimidating. Because again, I chose very, very simple references. Maybe back there seems more appropriate. Forgive me, I'm still waking up. Something like that. All right. And then maybe we have another shape, a small semi-sphere on top like that. And maybe that could be the first shape, right? Or maybe I could ignore that entirely. Maybe we don't want that. Maybe you want something like this. So there is some room to maneuver. Maybe instead of that, I'll have a half sphere down here that's contoured like that. Um, it might be interesting and important for you guys to practice draw through. So what draw through is, and again, it's in the Robertson book, is I'm not just going to be drawing the front of my shapes. I'm actually going to be drawing the back of my shapes because it allows me to be a little bit more precise with how I'm building stuff. So that's the back of that shape. So the shape, now that I've drawn through it, I actually know how that shape shaped like this from the front. It's shaped like this from the side. It's shaped like this from the top. And it all comes from my draw through. Okay. Again, the top, right? Uh, this could be, what could it be? How about a cube, right? So right there, right there, right there, right there. And then just perspective. How about this could be like a, like a tilted cube. That sounds fun. Like an angle cube. I think some of you guys have already given me homework that kind of looks like this. That's nice. And for the beak, maybe we'll draw a cone. Again, I'm going to draw through here. For your benefit, I'm drawing through with blue, just so you know what's draw through, what's actual line. Okay. And then for the little feeties, little feeties can be just be little, what do you want to call that? Triangles? Prisms? Prism there. And we'll say there's a prism there. So again, they're three dimensional. It's a prism. I'll draw through on this one just so you know what I'm thinking about. And then the tail, lovely little tail, heading away from us. But again, we can, we don't have to necessarily restrict ourselves right there. And if you consider the tail to be much more volumetric, it would be like that. But I think for this purposes, 
it would be much more like like that. It would be um a cube. Like that. I think it should be okay. And then we turn the reference off and look what we have. Isn't that cool? We have a little basic Minecraft bird that we can now paint. And not not I don't mean me, I mean you. You can now paint. And that's awesome. Because what have you done? You've done this, you've done this, you've done this. The only thing that you really need to do, I'll figure out, is these little truncated shapes, right? It's because you've done spheres for me and you've done a good job, right? You've done cones for me, you've done a great job. So this is how we combine all of our information. There's some small things that I think I want to get you guys thinking about before I just let you loose with this assignment. But again, um, if you guys have the time, uh, I'm going to... I'm gonna post these references in the chat right now and it would be great if you if you have the time right now that is to just give this a shot yourself you don't have to design it exactly the way that I'm designing it because there is some design involved in how you choose what shape goes where but just keep it basic keep it simple I'll put the stuff in the chat right now um, just try drawing over if you've got the uh, the inclination I'm not gonna force it on anybody but um, let's see how you do because this is going to be a pretty important step that I don't want you to to miss. Okay, so here's some here are those references that I was talking about. That's the shark, and that's the other two. How do we know that we're breaking down the shapes correctly? So as long as everything is essentially in line, I'm okay. Okay, let's actually that's a good question to ask. Let me give you a variation on this. Okay, because this could easily, this could easily be something different, right? So let's let's expand on your question a little bit. So this could have just been this, you know, it could have been a square. And this might be a simplified version. Uh, right there in perspective, right there in perspective, right there in perspective. Right? It could have been something like that. Wait, if you just move that to the top. And it could have been just maybe like that. A much simpler version of it. But you see, I'm quite comfortable moving in perspective while drawing. I just want to ensure that you guys have a similar commander with this kind of stuff. Because otherwise this can become a little bit uncomfortable. But hey, it's okay, you know? Because being uncomfortable, is, it's, it's totally alright. Because that just means you're learning what you haven't learned before. And if you ask me, it's about time. You're ready for it. I know you can do it. So, same thing over here. That could be much more of a prism. Oh, I'm not drawing through for you guys. That's my bad. Let me, let me quickly draw through. So, so you guys know what I'm looking at. So that's the other side of that, uh, that there triangle. Or it's actually a prism. That's the other side. Um, for this one, this would be the other side. That's what I'm thinking about. That's the shape. For this cube, it's obvious, but I'll still do it. And I encourage you guys to draw through. And again, it's really, really important. If you've ever been in a painting class and they say draw the unseen ear, well, this is what they're talking about. Being able to see all sides of what you're drawing, not just the visible side. Because this is important to us when we want wanting to paint something. Because it's essential contour information. So here's another version for you. But the important thing is the perspective is still maintained. You're still getting what you want out of this. Uh, what's an alternate version of this guy? How about cylinders, right? We, we know cylinders, they're easy. We know how to do them. Cylinder one, and cylinder two. Uh, we can draw through, actually this is on top of this, so there's no draw through. Right there. And then over here, maybe a little bit, little coney boys. Cone one, I'll draw through for you. That's the draw through there, that's the draw through there. And coney boy two, return of the cone. And here's an alternative. Kind of cool. So we turn the reference off. Look at that. How fun is that? Now we have these two boys over here. Yeah. You got this, this absolute unit, and this is basically like before and after you hit the gym. This guy's all cut up, and this guy's all poof. But perfectly valid solution, right? You don't have to recolor it, I expect everything just in black and white for now, but this is the idea. I want you to look at references, right, and I want you to draw over them. 
I want you to break it down into simple, achievable, three-dimensional shapes. Preferably, something that's close enough to a cube, because this is a much easier... Because if I show this to you guys, this one is probably really easy for you to do. This one might be a little bit more advanced. Because this is just cube, cube, slanted cube, cylinder, cylinder, cone, cone, um, prism, prism. And everybody that's done the previous classes can do this really well. Okay? This might be a little bit more difficult because we're dealing with com complex shapes. We'll get into that in a second. I'll come back to this. Do forgive me. We are going to quickly run through the other ones just so you guys have a good demo. Because I might have missed some concepts in that that I might have to do with this one over here. So we'll leave that over there. So this guy over here. Very simple again. Um, so what are the, the principles I'm using while I'm drawing these things for you? Well, there are a lot of very interesting things we can think about, right? So we can think about center line. If that's the cent central line on this particular thing, that'll give me a good idea that if I have a curve like that, most likely I have a curve on the other end. So center line can give you a good, clear example on how things are going to be moving in space. If for whatever reason one side is being obscured, you know that it's going to have some symmetry across the center line. Little things like that. Again, I'm not going to go into that too much because that is just paint. drawing 101 but if I need to I will but I trust you guys for right now I think you'll be able to manage so this is a shape like this let me draw through for you grab my blue so this is what I'm seeing in my head and this is exactly why draw through is important because you quite you don't really know what you're looking at when I do something like that for you without a before value but if I do this you're like oh wait a second now I, now I see it I kind of see it maybe I see it because what we're actually looking at is it's a shape like this. So that's the bottom, that's the back, and it's a, something we call a speed form. It's a speed form. So the contours on this are like this. Speed forms are really, really common, and it's actually really fun. I've done speed forms uh, on ink on paper for one of my classes before. Really, really fun. Fun thing to learn. So that's my form number one. And again, you see, I can contour it. Remember, I want you to think about contouring these shapes. We'll come back to the first one, uh, but you already see a bit of a cheat on the second one, right? I've shown you what I kind of expect. And again, the multiple correct solutions, right? You don't have to restrict yourself to any one. Uh, the red is not too hot with the red of the ladybug. Maybe we'll switch to blue. Something like this, maybe. So we'll say the back of this is like that. Like that. Get the back, and then I have this whole big mama jumbo in the back, right? And I think it's flat on the bottom. So again, I flatten it on the bottom, and I have this big little beautiful shape right there. That's awesome. Again, from the side, the shape looks like this. From the front, the shape looks like this. In perspective, the shape looks like this. I draw that center line and complete it. So you should be able to do this. I'm not asking you to do this stuff, but if you really know what you're looking at, you'll be able to do this pretty easily. And then the contour lines on top of this would be like that. Contour, contour, contour. Nice, solid shape. Contour, contour, contour. How fun is that, dude? That is so fun to me because that just means that I can just draw this in any perspective I want to. I can paint this any perspective I want to, and that's that's such a, that's such a relieving news because painting is is annoying, it's hard, it's difficult. I've always wanted to do it, but I never could, and now I know. It's fun. Okay, same thing over here. This front section. This could be a cylinder. It could be a cube. Let's say it's a cube for some contrast. Right there, right there. Again, in perspective. So we basically have solved this. And then we have this little nub nub at the, at the bottom. That could be um, a cylinder. It could be a half sphere. Half sphere sounds good to me. Half sphere. Ah, uh, look at how cute that is. And then we have these little cylinders. There and then there. Little baby cylinders. We have this guy who's more like a cone. This shape is really common, by the way, because I've done a bunch of insects in basic 3D form. And this shape of uh, a cone that's expanded on one side really really common 
So I'll be using a lot of those. You get the idea, right? Let me just continue on and on and on. Then we get rid of the reference and see what we're left with. That's kind of cool. The only part of this that's kind of shaky is this front section that I think I should probably redraw. That's okay. We redraw it. We just grab an eraser tool because we are cheaters and we use computer to do our drawing. Let's erase that really quickly. Let's try to convince ourselves a bit more. This have one's a little bit, a little bit suspect. Maybe that's better. There we go. Maybe that's a bit more solid. This is the idea that I want you guys to do. Okay? How to learn to draw through the object if you don't know how to do it? Okay, so learning to draw through is actually a rather large and vast subject. It's um, something that you just get with a lot of practice. Um, but if you haven't done draw through just yet, I think the best thing for you to do is to just draw shapes from imagination and try and make them more three-dimensional. So there's a very quick exercise that my AD always uh, teaches us to do, which is like draw any shape like that, and then find like the center line. So let's just say that's the center line over there. And then symmetry it across. So that would be like that. That would be like that. So that's symmetry, that would be like that. So basically what you're doing is you're basically, if you can't see stuff, you're drawing through it. That would be like that. And ultimately you end up with something that's three dimensional and has a lot of form. So that would be in shadow. So just drawing shapes and making them more three-dimensional could be a good exercise to kind of uh, to kind of learn draw through because it forces you to think about the opposite side. To learn the fundamentals of it, I think we should go back to just drawing cubes and cylinders and spheres in perspective. Um, I think that's the, the most basic version of learning this, this principle. So whenever you're drawing your cubes in perspective, don't just draw this, please. And again, this is why Robinson always talks about it. Don't draw just this. Please draw this. It's important to know where the rest of that is going. So doing these exercises. So same thing with a cylinder. When you're drawing a cylinder, don't just do this. Pardon my ellipses. Don't just do this. Do this. Right? And once you draw this in enough orientations, it sort of clicks in the back of your head. Okay? So can we break it down in the way that you did? Sure, totally fine. I don't mind you uh, taking my breakdowns if it's, you're having a really big problem with this, but you should be pretty good to go. Uh, it's just a very simple way of doing stuff. Um, I think we're okay so far. Does anybody want me to do the shark? I think the shark's actually quite easy, right? So if you can if you can do this and this, the shark should be pretty straightforward, but we'll do it really quickly. Shark's really fun, man. What a, what a simple, beautiful, elegant design. We have one cone there. Again, we have beautiful, beautiful cones. Again, draw through if you can. I encourage it. Very, very important. So the draw through is just a circle. Okay. You can always think about the draw through as if I draw just this red part, it's drawing it from one perspective, which is how we're viewing the object. But this blue, it tells us how it's oriented with almost every perspective because it gives me the full picture. So reorientation is a thing. So if I don't draw this, can we really be sure that this is a cone because what if i tell you that it's actually this you know what if i tell you this is actually this kind of idea it's a half cone this is a two-faced shark it's got one face one half of its face is a shark and the other half is nothing right would you be able to really say for certain that's not the case well you know sharks are completely symmetrical right sure but what about this particular image we don't know so the unknown element of the piece is resolved when you do the draw through so now I know with certainty what I've drawn. So now it's consistent. So drawing those forms. So pretty cool. Um, on a side note, don't make this mistake. It's very easy to do it, which is why I've been doing it all through this demonstration. Please, when you do your ellipses, make sure that the ellipse actually turns when it comes close to the um, to the edge. I think if you guys were here for Costas class, we talked about this already. But this ellipse has to curve at least a little bit. So don't mind me, don't look at my, my shitty ellipse drawing skills. Get the idea, all right? So that's right over there. And again, same little idea. Can I show you something else with uh, with these kind of techniques? Yeah, I can. So if I draw the center line here, and if I just draw the center line for the entire drawing, I know that this little point, the center line for this and the next shape has to be the same. So when I add the next shape, I know that it starts to curl right over there because it's the same center line. 
right? And again, this one might not make that much sense to you if you're not familiar with the centerline concepts, but just for those that do, uh, I'm trying to bridge it for you guys as well, because if you're from an industrial drawing background, that'll make a lot of sense. Okay, same thing over there. So again, we end up with these big chunky sushi shapes, and that's awesome. Really simple, really fun to draw. Again, think about that contour. Think about the contour there. So we get these big chunk shapes. And again, no right or wrong way to do this. I think I actually did a shark when I was learning this concept. And it got reviewed okay. Wasn't too bad. Right there. And we can just say, why not? We'll just leave it right there. Because I think you guys are getting the idea. And the fins, very simple. I find that center line right over there. I find that thickness. So if I'll simplify it, thickness is like, like that. And I can assume that it's also going to be on the other side. But we can't really see the other side, can we? So right there. And then we just simplify it for that. So maybe the whole shape will be something like this. No, it could just be this simple. We don't have to overcomplicate it for right now. We're not trying to get the exact shark proportions. This is simple, simple enough. So this shape it just looks like this. Let me draw through really quickly. Right there. Uh, I guess it's not perfectly in perspective. That's okay. But the shape is like this. And we keep going, right? Same thing over here. Draw a shape on top. We draw a triangle, our prism, and we extrude it to get this fin. So these blue lines over here are going to be the draw through lines. Right? So what is this shape? Again, I'm trying to draw this out for you just as an exercise. From the front, it looks like this. From the side, it looks like this. And in perspective, it looks like this. Cool, right? And that is all we're left with. We're not that far away. We're not that far away from what we want. Okay. So, for the purposes of this particular class, for the next week, we're going to be doing things that are simple. This is where I want you to be a little bit careful with your decision making, okay? I don't want you guys to just pick anything that's really, really tough and say, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to kill this. I'm going to, I'm going to destroy this. Pick simple stuff. So pick your basic guys. Your, maybe this is a bit too complex, but you're really, really simple animals, really cute little guys. Pick these and do them, do them well, and then pick the more complex stuff. For your more advanced guys, uh, I don't mind. Pick whatever you'd like and then see what you can do. If you've never done stuff like this, if you're not used to lighting things from imagination, go crazy. See what you can do. And I'll try my best to help you. Okay, so we need to talk about some small things here, and I think those two uh, kingfishers up there are going to help us. So I'll take a drink of water. If there are any questions, now is a good time. Um, you can start the homework from this week, but uh, I kind of encourage you to do the previous stuff just so all of this makes sense. But if you want to learn your cylinders and you want to learn your spheres while you do these complex forms, that's up to you. But one of the biggest things that I've always tried to give you guys is the idea that you as a beginner, the difference between you and a professional is not necessarily in experience. If you look at just the work, it's really effort that... Um, distinguishes you from um, a, a professional because a professional can do what you can do with a lot less effort so you might think it's the other way around but it's not true so being able to break things down step by step and do the gruesome grueling individual steps each one of them in isolation that's what you should be doing as a beginner if you want to really improve and improve quickly right because everybody wants to just start with doing a splash art of a person that's moving with explosions in the background it's just so much and i encourage you to not try and overload yourself with so many things how about just a person forget about that how about just a finger 
Uh, but let's just try and shade that properly. And if you can do that, the same principles will apply to everything. But doing it in isolation has the benefit of us not being distracted by so many other aspects of drawing and painting. There's a lot to figure out, but if you just do it step by step, it just becomes a matter of putting effort in, not a matter of you being experienced or not to get the same quality of work. Sure, while adding in those steps, it might add in 10, 20, 50 hours additionally to a piece, but at the end of the day, you have a piece that rivals the professionals, and that's awesome. So remember, effort, effort after a certain point is the only precluding factor. Okay, uh, I think we can continue here. Uh, we do this as homework and then share it in the next class. Yeah, you DM it to me or you um, you put it in my classwork channel. You can hit exclamation mark Patel to join my class. If somebody that's already a member can help them out, that'd be great. And uh, put the homework in my corner or DM it to me. Either or, it's totally fine. And um, we can review it. So I'm going to review last week's homework or the last class homework at the end of this class. So I'll give you a proper homework brief uh, at the end of the class. Let's just continue with the demo. I'm gonna grab these two guys over here because there are some things that I want to tell you guys about that's important because I know you can already shade the individual shapes but what happens when things are in combination I think it's worth considering okay so let's go back to our baseline our baseline was what again drawing done all right we're done with that drawing it's over easy because we just stole it from reference how crazy is that so we circumvented the hardest step awesome now I can just paint so contour, shape, shadow, I've heard the story before. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so here's what you're going to be doing. Contour, really important. For this one, they're just a bunch of cubes, man. I played Minecraft before, I can do that. What about this guy? Okay, some little complex ideas over here. That's maybe a little bit of a problem. Do I really know what I'm doing? Maybe not, right? Maybe not. So let's actually help myself out here. So I'm going to grab my contouring color, which is going to be green. That's a little bit too dead of a color. How about, how about yellow? Yellow sounds fun. Cool. Nice. <laughs> it's like a dead yellow green. Uh, can we... That's fine. Okay. So we go here. We go here. So what am I doing? I'm just contouring around. I'm following the surface at every stage. Contouring around. Same thing on the other side, right? On the So that was major axis contour. This is minor axis contour. So I'm just developing a 3D understanding of my object because that's going to help me to figure out the shadow shapes, right? So I'll do this for anything that I have a problem with. So this square, I got it, dude. I got it in my bag. I know exactly what that looks like. What about this? Oh, I'm not sure. Let me try. I think it's like that, right? Because I see this is curved like this and this is curved like nothing. So I'm assuming it's going to gradually go down towards nothing. Okay, I kind of get it. What about the other side? I see this curve like this. So it's probably a little bit like that. This curves like this, probably a little bit like that. And the one in between, oh, I guess it's gonna be in between. Oh, I guess I just solved my problem. Excellent, oh, that was easy. Cool, yeah, what about this one, dude? What happens with this one? It's not a cylinder, it's not a cone. It's something in between, but it's all rubbery at the end. I think I can solve this, I think I can manage this position. So I see this curve here. Okay, maybe it's the same curve. Maybe it's the same curve. What about this one over here? Maybe it's something like that. Right, I see that, it's probably close. I see this is probably close. And that's how I think about contours, right? I use the external contours to bring in the internal contours. Very simple. So I've solved my problem of contouring. So now I have a good understanding in my head of where things are pointed. That's really valuable because here comes the sun, da da doo doo, in the sky, and that's going to be lighting everything. Okay, very cool. Let's apply some light and shadow, shall we? So, what are your steps? Now we are at the step where we need to apply the shape and the shadow, which means we have entered the realm of the one, the two, and the tree, right? So the one, two, and the tree are the ones that we need to deal with right now. So what is your number one? The particular object in the light. What is the number two? The object that's in the half tone. What is number three? The part of the object that's in the shadow. So in it might seem like a lot, your one, two, three. So your, your one, your three and your two, but it's not a lot because the beauty of halfway to black is that the only one you need to make a decision about is this. And let's make that decision, right? Let's paint the base values of this object, right? And just let's just assume that what we're gonna be painting is just the object in the light. So I'm saying that this particular beak is gonna be, so I can just turn the reference off. This particular beak is gonna be this value in the light.
So this value, let me just use selection tool for ease of access. It's going to be that value in the light. So this is the light value, remember, the value in the light. I can consider that this little front facing portion, let's just say that's this value. I, I'm not sticking to the local value of the reference because again, I care about my learning. So I'm just going to use whatever value I, I, I see fit to use. It's all good. Maybe these little nubby nubs are going to be just nice and dark. Beautiful. I'm going to think about this guy over here. Let's pick that as a nice white color. So I'm using layer management in the back just to make my life a bit easier. That's going to be, let's just say it's this value. A bit too close for my comfort. How about that? A bit too close to the background. How about that? That's comfortable. Cool. Okay. Let's do the next one. So you see what I'm talking about, right? It's just a simple, simple process that as long as you maintain the diligence, the patience to follow it through, you will see results. I guarantee results. That's a rare thing to say in drawing and painting. Nobody can say I guarantee results very often, but here I can. Okay, let's pick that value for his big little tummy tum. And we have this square over here. Let's pick this value again. Or maybe it's a dark value for contrast. Looks cool. Okay, so what have I done just now? I have simply picked every single local color in light that's the one decision i made and it happens to be one of the only decisions i have to make so this it might seem like a lot this is all there is really okay because when i collapse all these layers i can find the beginning so layers get collapsed that's what we're left with that's just the number ones of every single area on our piece the number one aka the value in the light Okay, let's do the number threes. And this is not a decision, because if you know this, this is just gonna be halfway to black. Let's do that really, really quickly. So I'll turn on my help handy dandy grid. The light's coming from the top, because remember, we're dealing with shadow now. So that means we're dealing with shape, which means we're dealing with contour, which means we're dealing with drawing. You see how everything's connected? It's all connected. Okay, light coming from the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick all these lovely shadow shapes. So the method that you use while you do this is up to you. I'm not gonna be picky. I used my selection tool to grab the flat value. And I picked the light value, I cut it into half, halfway to black, and I get that corresponding shadow value in correspondence with the contour. Shape is maintained, right? Beautiful. Same thing over here, right? I pick, I take this value over here for this ginormous unit in the back. Pick the value halfway to black, right? I'm not going to be super specific with my shadows. Technically speaking, it would be more like this. But just to stick with the idea and be a bit more basic with it, I'm not going to be super strict with this for the first week. But let's just say it's going to be like that, right? Something like that is a bit more simple than doing the actual complex shape. But in reality, again, if the light's coming from the top, you know, something more akin to this. But I want to stick to this just so it's simpler. It's a bit simpler to, to explain. Because again, it's following that contour perfectly. Okay. I picked this one over here. And again, I have this goes to halfway to black. But here's the problem, right? Now I don't think I can bullshit my way through this. Because if I do this, suddenly it becomes a little bit awkward. So I know that needs to be horizontal. So what am I doing really? I'm just thinking about what would the contour on this area be? So if, if I contour it on that side, what would it look like? And that's how I'm coming up with this particular shape over here. So in this case, it would be more like that. So again, because if I draw a line in that particular area, it would look like that. Cool. 
So that's our number twos. I'm sorry, our number threes for these larger objects. I can't see the bottom of this this um, square, but or this cube. I can barely see it. Maybe I'll just add the value there just just so I have it later on. I can use it. So that dark just goes there, and I think that's about it. Oh, back here. Don't don't forget. Now back here, shadow value, underside of the cube. So this is our number three here. Cool, man. All right, let's get rid of these lines and see what we have. How sick is that, right? That's so sick. That's our number two. That's our number three, rather. So we added the value in the light, and then using halfway to black, we got the shadow value in the appropriate shape using the contour. Let's keep going. Let's maintain this momentum. Okay, so remember, all of this has been from our head so far. Number two is values facing just slightly towards the light. So I can consider this to be a value that's doing just like that. And remember, how do we select these values over here? Quite simple. We just pick something that's relatively close to the light. There's a new video on the Proco channel, and it's called The Mistake That Most People Make When They're Doing Painting. And it deals with the subject of picking half tones. I encourage you to go watch that in your free time if you can. This one over here. Again, this value over here, not quite facing directly at the light, facing a little bit away, but not away enough for it to be the dark. So this can go right here. Cool. Very, very cool. Okay. And for these ones over here, I can pick a half tone value that's very close to the main value because again they're spherical. So they're going to have some value that's facing a little bit away. Of course, they're going to have that kind of value. So I'll pick this value over here as a number three. Sometimes I skip this step, by the way, for spherical objects. Sometimes I add them in. Let's add them in this time. Just in case somebody, if they want to use it, they can. Let's go back to our baseline. Look at that, dude. We're almost all the way there already. That's crazy. Okay, some things need to be resolved. That's all you're looking pretty three-dimensional, man, if you ask me. Looking pretty 3D already. And I've barely done anything to, to, to change my shapes. It's just basically me painting other lines and hoping for the best, and it's all you're looking pretty okay. I'll do a little bit of cleanup. I think I'd like this to be more separate, if you ask me, just for comfort's sake. So this is the little aspect of art which is more about communication than it is about sticking to rules. So I say that I want this to be more distinct, so I will make that change. Because again, I want to see, and this is the, the rule that we have in the class, right? Our class rule is that we need to be able to communicate things clearly. That's something that we care about. So either this goes darker or this goes lighter, just to make sure that's clear. Uh, I'm going to say that for right now, we can just leave it right there. That seems sufficient for right now, because I know there's going to be something added there eventually. So I'm here, I added the one, two, three, and then it's just a simple matter of gradation, right? Really, really cool from now on. So gradation is a nice little simple step that we're going to be doing to ensure that this looks realistic, right? So this goes back to what we talked about earlier in our previous classes. From the light all the way to the half tone, there's a gradation, and from the bounce light all the way up to my terminator, there's a gradation. Um, maybe we'll go into that right now. Why not? But um, I think that part is a little bit obvious. Here's the part that's not obvious. So this is now the area that we, I'm concerned about the most. What happens when I join objects together? So so far in the homework you provided me, you've done objects in isolation, but now it's time to do objects together. What changes? There are two really, really big things to concern yourself with. The first one is ambient occlusion, so AO. The second one is cast shadow. These are enormous because these are going to be able to tell you what the interrelationship between each individual shape is going to be. 
So let me demo that and I'll do it on a different layer. So a light coming from the top, that means that this particular box is going to cast a shadow on this particular plane down here. Good. So light's going to be hitting this from the top and it's going to be casting a shadow. Now, I want you to be very certain about something, which is I don't expect these cast shadows to be perfect. In fact, I almost don't want them to be perfect because these cast shadows are meant to communicate stuff. They're not meant to be perfect shadows. So I will actually design a shadow like this, basically, on the surface, just because it communicates a lot of things to the viewer. It communicates that, okay, this is a cube object. It's above this. So I'm not, I'm not being very specific with my car shadow. This is really important because this is bridging the idea between I want to be accurate and follow reality and I want to be an artist and convey things clearly. So if you want, you can go back to all sorts of illustrations you like and I want you to observe the shadow because I've taught you in previous classes how to cast perfectly accurate shadows, right? So you guys remember the stick method that we did? That's a perfect shadow. That's completely realistically accurate. This never happens because a shadow is just a tool in communication. There's a certain line as an artist that you draw between I am going to follow the rules and I am going to do what communicates or looks good. So when it comes down to car shadow, I'm very careful because very easily this car shadow could tell me nothing, but I want it to tell me a lot. So I'll design this to give me communication because imagine if it was all the way to the top, all the way to the edge, that almost loses some information, right? Because then I don't exactly know how square this is. You might say, okay, maybe you can take the contour on the other side. But again, it's it's losing communication for me. I don't like that. So I will ensure that these cast shadows are nice and clear with what they're doing. Same thing over here, right? I'll design a cast shadow underneath this, this little guy over here. In the center. Telling me about this beak. Same thing over here. So again, the cast shadow is being assisted by the contour lines. Remember, I'm thinking about the contour with everything. When you want to place anything on an object, be it a decal, a material, be it anything, you have to consider how that object is formed, which is why I always scream from the top of the hills, from the top of these buildings. Step number two in our process, contour. Okay. Go back here. So I'll define car shadows. The more you can define these car shadows, the better because these are liquid gold when it comes to communication. If you have just a regular drawing and you add exclusively the cast shadow, that's perfectly okay. That'll get you what you need because it is very, very powerful as a tool. Okay, so once I add this cast shadow in, once I know where it goes, what's the value here? Interesting, that's an interesting question. What's the value in this particular area? Well, we know that, don't we? Because we know what the shadow value for this object is because it's this. This is a value that we've defined for this object to say, okay, if you can't see the light, boom, Bob's your uncle, it's this value. So we know what that value is going to be. So that's just a simple matter of us filling that value in for the cast shadow. Right there. And right there. Oh no, that's a problem, right? Oh no. We suddenly added a value in, but we lost communication. That's a big no-go. I do not like that, okay? And you shouldn't like that either, because how dare the canvas do something without your permission? That is just completely out of the ordinary. We're not okay with that. So, I make adjustments. I'll make this value over here just a little bit lighter. And this is exactly why I'm demoing this for you guys, because you'll find the exact same problem. You'll have this problem, you'll encounter this problem at least once. Because you'll be following rules, but the painting is going to be like, nope, I want to do whatever I want to do. And it's up to you to grab your pencil, your stylus, your pen, and then beat the shit out of your canvas and say, there's no way you're going to disobey me. I run. I run this down. This is my time to run. Okay. There you go. Get this in, in order. Pretty okay so far. But you always got to be the boss of the canvas. Okay. So... Even though I couldn't use the shadow value before of this particular shape because it was underneath, now I can use it, right? Because remember, halfway to black of this value tells me the shadow value of this particular color. So halfway to black, that is the shadow value, right? It's a good baseline, very, very good baseline. Over here, now this particular shape, 
just gonna be like that. I can just grab that shadow value, easy peasy. And again, if you say, James, communication, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, you're probably right, you know? Because I can find reason to make this lighter. I could say there's, a, there's an ambient light coming from the top, which is going to lighten up the shadow over here to make it more distinctive. Totally possible. But we'll skip over this step for right now. It's okay. We don't have to be that serious. That, that, that one I actually like. I like good connected shadow shapes like that. Okay. So now we go back, right? So this is what we have right now. And it looks so cool. It looks so sick because already we're looking in that more realistic territory but you see how much those cast shadows added right a crazy crazy amount to our communication because with the cast shadow it's not just telling us ideas about what something is in the shadow or what something is in terms of its shape but it's telling us the relationship between different shapes and that's the powerful part about this because we care about these relationships a lot when we do our paintings so this is what we're at. And it looks pretty goddamn solid so far, if I do say so myself, right? Pretty goddamn solid so far. That's exactly what we're looking for. And again, every step has been achievable, right? That's the car shadow step right there. Very nice and achievable, right? And what did we do before? We defined these larger light shapes based on our drawing. And we defined the shadow shapes based on the contour. And the shadow value based on halfway to black. Very simple, right? And before that, we drew this on top of a reference. Every step achievable every step possible very very simple okay remember there's more to this than just the cast shadow on objects so we call this in in concept art we call it self cast so casting on yourself there's also casting on the floor right so again this is where your shadow projection comes into play i don't want you guys to be perfect with this again i want the shadow to be designed well but i can quickly do a quick demo on how I plot the shadow and again I don't I'm not the reason I'm not commentating over this particular part is because I don't consider it to be very important personally speaking the shadow is just meant as communication it's not meant to be uh, to me it's not really something that's important to to get perfectly right so that's how I plot the shadow using um, vertical cast method you can plot similar shadows in the Robinson book if you're curious about this method but that's how I think about the shadow basically and from this whole idea I get a shape that's like this I should probably been managing my layers a little bit better that's okay no harm no foul even though we're painting a bird right there what is the shadow value can anybody tell me what is the shadow value on the on the bottom I want to draw a cast shadow off this particular bird onto this floor. What is that shadow value? All right, halfway to black of what though? Yeah, there you go, halfway to black on the floor color, excellent. So we're never guessing, that's the beautiful part, right? When I said that the only decision you're gonna be making is the drawing and the value in the light, I was not joking, right? With using our little techniques here, we're able to reduce the number of decisions that we can make. And if we can make less decisions, it's less likely that we're gonna mess up, right? The simpler, the better. Okay, here's where we're at. Well, that's that's a little bit annoying. Hold on, I need to get rid of this, this, these annoying little lines here that I use for my plot. Sorry about that. That was supposed to be on a different layer, but we've all been there. We've all been there. All right, quick little cleanup job, don't mind me following my janitorial duties there we go there we go there we go and already look at how how cool this is right this is all from us you know me and you we've been through this journey together and this is looking pretty goddamn solid and like i said before with our earlier demo right i consider this a solved drawing a solved painting because everything is already here all i need to do is to add my gradation add my bounce lights add my specular lights, add my edges, add my occlusions, add all of the stuff, and I'm donezo, dude. Everything is over. Except we have not considered this little guy over here. Again, our other interaction force. Cost shadow number one, ambient occlusion number two. So, quick little side thought here. Ambient occlusion is a very, very semantic heavy topic in art because people will define it differently for you. 
So some people define if I draw a cube about space. Some people will define the contact shadow as ambient occlusion as well. And some people will just say, okay, so if I'm drawing a face and the little area under the nose, near the glabella, those areas are ambiently occluded because it's occluded from the ambient light. Occluded for, for anybody that doesn't know what ambient occlusion is, ambient just means the diffuse, the general light in the sky, or the diffuse light in the surroundings, in the environment. And occlusion comes from the word occluded, which means blocked. So block the general, block the general light, ambient occlusion, things that are generally in shadow. So when I refer to ambient occlusion in my class, I talk about something a little bit different, still in the realm, in the wing, in the category of ambient occlusion, but I specifically talk about. So when I give you a crit and I say your AO is off, this is what I'm talking about. When two objects are close together, right? Let's say two cylinders. Okay, so two objects are close together. If I want to indicate the draw through, I'll do it like this. That's the draw through, so you get the perspective correctly. The closer I move these cylinders, the darker the area in between them is going to get. Okay, try this out for yourself. Hold your palms out in front of you, bring your palms slowly together, and then observe what happens. Even in the absence of one casting over the other, you will observe a little bit of darkness because less light can scatter in between the light, which makes it darker in between the, um, the planes, right? So, why this is important to us for our communication, and again, I'm going to use this as a tool for my communication. I don't have a strong understanding of what's happening between this beak and this face. So I use ambient occlusion to ensure that I have a very strong relationship between these two things, because you can't just have two things next to each other and have it not affect each other. That is just not how light works. Everything influences everything. That's just how things occur in reality. So we have a simplified version for this class and we'll complicate it as we move forward. But here's the simplest example of ambient occlusion. So two shapes close to each other. Hmm, familiar. Okay, how do I define that in terms of what I can do in terms of my painting? We'll make a separate layer for AO. So here's a simple solution. I will consider the area around this object. So I use selection tool for this. Uh, we, we can go into mechanics if it's a question about it, but the principle is this. I expect that the area behind this particular cone gets darker. Okay, this is what I expect. This is what you expect. You don't even know you expect this, but you expect this because it's important. So I want something like that on the back of this. But that looks terrible, James. That looks awful. You're right. And why is that? It's because A, my selection is garbage, and B, because we're not gradiating anything. So the very common way that we do this in, in concept, when you're doing quick little renders, is using an airbrush. So again, I don't mind an airbrush for this particular reason. And we just pick the area over here, we halfway to black it, or we just double the darkness regardless. And all we have to do is use the tip of our airbrush, the tip of the airbrush, and add darkness behind the object. Like that. This might look a little bit awkward, because I haven't graded anything else, but that's a super, super important step. So don't be dumb like me and use selection tool very poorly. Be a bit smarter. Just use layer management, because right now my layer is a little bit screwed up. But ultimately you end up, end up with something like this. Which is a little... You see the little darkness behind stuff? That, that stuff is gold, let me tell you. It is gold. It is a golden opportunity for you to describe the relationship between forms. But you see between this and this, you see how much weight that has now? It's actually crazy how insane that is. And I go back to the drawings I've shown you that I've done in the past. See me use this, this, this purpose in a bunch of areas, like over there. It's subtle, right? It's subtle. But without this, it is so much more obvious that stuff is, real, is unrealistic. It is a big part of realistic lighting. Ambient occlusion. You see that over there? Ambient underneath the arm. So this is basically a lot of what painting is about. It's about painting in these ambient occlusions, taking into consideration the ambience exist. Okay? If you ever play a game and you turn off the ambient occlusion, 
you realize just how unrealistic it looks because again this interaction is a very underrated part okay so look in this drawing and see if you can think about any other areas that'll be ambiently occluded right so maybe the back over here possible if you could see it that is uh, this already has a cast shadow so it's perfectly okay uh, maybe this is all that there is for this particular drawing let's just say but that's enough because we've demonstrated the concept i'm happy enough with that so i want you to experiment with how harsh and how how light you can make this and still keep things look, looking natural okay so these are the two major tools that i'm giving you for this particular lesson and this is all that you're going to be trying to resolve besides the drawing for my class this week ambient occlusion and cast shadow because if i remove both of them you see how much my communication starts to fail even though i did everything right wow it's so unfair i hate life but really it's just because we didn't consider cast shadow ambient occlusion okay maybe i could have picked a better example for ambience maybe this would have been a better example but you get the, get the you get the idea right so that's just a simple idea and then it's over the struggle is over because then it's just a matter of saying okay maybe you can just demo this really quickly we'll demo a couple of parts so i've picked everything everything is done now it's just a matter of gradation right so let's go ahead and select these these things over here so let's, i'll select this top shape very nice so i generally work in a single layer but i'm sure some of you guys have better management skills than i do so you'll work on multiple but again now it's just a question of gradiating the same old way we always have done now we are back to our baseline we've done all of our thinking now it's just time for mindless monkey work right so gradation gradation following the contour following the contour bounce light again bounce light can never be stronger than the main light so bounce light right there gradient the bounce light gradient the bounce light make sure the core shadow is not too sharp so gradient the core shadow and this can all be done manually gradient the core shadow how long did that take us not long at all and it already looks now the thing is like i'm not impressed by this step at all because i realize that this step is literally just mindless monkey work because all of our thinking has led us up to this moment. Again, more stuff, because we know we can do more, so let's do more. What's on top of that? On top of this, we have our idea of specular lighting. Very cool, love specular. All my homies love specular. So we add in a specular light. Again, James Patel's signature secret to draw specular lights. I do a teeny tiny, teeny tiny thing right there, little stroke, bigger stroke, bigger stroke bigger stroke what's it what's the idea here i'm just gradiating i'm just straight gradiating bro straight gradiation all the way i erase around to get a nice sharp little beautiful specular i play around with it nothing wrong with that double back a little bit we get our little specular light mm, most impressive right there right i'm not satisfied let's do more because uh, we can always draw from our fundamental steps remember the, the cylinder lesson remember the cone lesson remember the sphere lesson all of that stuff this is where you start to bring in those reps this is where you start to bring in the power you've accumulated because you've been powering up all this time it's time to unleash your inner strength so i'll, I'll fix the edges slightly because i don't like crystal clear edges you know that about me you know you know i've given you that crit before don't make the edges perfect because we don't like perfect edges we don't like perfection as human beings so get that done i can even throw in some some effects right let's michael bay this stuff up let's ross draws this stuff up so i'll lock the transparency in some creative layer management in krita and i can paint in some general light some some uh, tangential light oh what on earth is this hello Okay, maybe I uh, have the wrong layers. Okay, let's do this instead. If you're going to be like that, then so be it. Remember, you got to manhandle your canvas. Never ever let your canvas tell you what to do. 
So at, in the event that it's it's misbehaving, right? That's totally okay. Because again, at the end of the day, you have the power over it. So if you're not going to behave, I'm just going to brute force to lecture you because you cannot escape. Okay. Don't let your canvas do what tell you what to do. You are the master of its destiny. So selection done. Grab that background value and just add a little bit of that tangential line we talked about in earlier classes. A little bit of that tangential. And remember, when you add something like that, always erase it along the contour. What I did there is just so infinitesimal. It's just so imperceivable, imperceptible. Just, but then don't worry about that because it's important that I did it because I did it for me. I did it because it's very important to think about the contour with every step that you take. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but most of the time it does. Okay, very fun, very cool. Great job, James. Thank you. Appreciate that. So that's the simplest way to get from one side to the other. And now it's just the time to make modifications and variations and all your permutations about stuff like this. I can kind of play around with the core shadow. I can say, hey, James, man, your core shadow looks okay. What's up with that bounce light, man? I can't even see. Is, this, is there any bounce light? I'm sorry, Mike. Do you? Okay, fine. We can upgrade that bounce light real quick. No problem. Let me just grab my handy dandy selection tool and let's jump forward. Add a bit of that bounce light. This is fine. Okay, a bit more of that bounce light. Ah, okay, I see it now, James. Thank you very much. No problem, dude. Okay, fantastic. So you do this for the entire drawing and you're going to end up with something like this. Very carefully picked, carefully selected, nice and well contrasted. Am I making sense, guys? Everything good? Hell yeah. Yeah, this stuff's not hard. It's very easy. So, I have gone through the ambient occlusion, I've gone through the cast shadow, and I've demoed a small little piece for me. Uh, for you, rather, and for me, of course. All of this is for me. But that is all you need to know to deliver to me your homework assignment. Hell yeah, let's go. Homework time. What do you want to do for me? Doesn't matter. What do I want you to do for me? That's what matters. So, I want you to draw over. Pick five cool creatures. I want you to pick five cool refs of creatures. You know what? This is quick. So let's say five plus five. Give me two pages. I want you to draw over them for me. Okay? And by draw over, I mean I want you to give me shapes. Because I want to be sure. Because I actually care a lot about helping you guys. So I want to be sure you guys can actually do this step. Because this step is the most important. Remember our baseline? Our mantra? Our goal? Our creed? Drawing. Number one. This list is a list of priorities. And this is priority number one. Drawing. I want to make sure that you can do it and if you are close if you are far i want to be able to help you out with that so draw this for me it's important because remember none of the stuff that we did will make any sense without that baseline drawing remember this guy over here remember this guy remember our friend our buddy our pal he might be lost to the ages we might have brushed a lot of dirt on top of him we, we forgot it but he is the reason we are here today this is our foundation our motor stone this is the pillar upon which we stand so don't forget about him drawing is important so even though we're here and we're all fancy don't forget the drawing the drawing god is here so that's exactly why i want you guys to provide me with five plus five drawings on top of cool references i want you to pick basic shapes and i want you to pick at least five shapes per drawing so if you need to break stuff up break it up i want to see five shapes okay what did I even write? What is this? Does anybody know what this is? Oh, creatures. Jesus Christ. What am... it's terrible handwriting. Okay. Get, the, get rid of this. We'll write something legible. Creatures. Okay. They can be birds. They can be fish. They can be whatever you wish. But I want those delivered to me. So that all of us can see. So... Pick stuff like this. Insects and birds are very simple. Lizards are simple. Fish are simple. Don't give me orangutans and, you know, chimpanzees and stuff like that. You can do it if you'd like to, but just remember they're more complex. We'll get there, man. We're going to be doing this for a couple of weeks. So eventually I'm going to have you guys do exactly this assignment, which is people, which is really fun. But remember, if you're practicing a skill, practice it in a way that's going to be conducive to your learning. 
So don't distract yourself with complexity. Learn the principle and then learn it with complexity. Don't learn the principle with complexity. That's too many steps. Simplify the steps, benefit your life. Okay, so that's the first step. From this, I want you to make a decision. Pick, let's say two. Let's say one minimum, two if you wanna be a Jimmy Neutron. And we're gonna say, I want you to paint this for me. Paint it for me. Which means, give me the one, two, three. Right? Oh, not give me the one, two, three, but do the one, two, three. Radiate it, highlight it, do everything you need to. So I've already provided you with, with something like this and maybe the, the crab one, so you have a benchmark. So if you're missing something, you'll be able to tell by comparing those two. And I've given you the demo. I think I've sufficiently equipped you for this homework because this is the big one, guys. This is the really, really important one. Because when you can do this, it's going to be so trivially easy for you to turn something like that into a full-fledged, beautiful painting from your imagination, right? We've done all this stuff. We haven't even looked at a reference. I don't even know what a reference looks like anymore. I've been drawing, I've been contouring, I've been shading, I've been one to three, I've been halfway into black. I've been doing all this stuff from my mind. And that's great because when it comes time for us to paint along with reference, we don't come as a servant to the reference. We come as a strong individual authority that can work with the reference to make something even better. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So references or the homework for you guys that are new here, always provide to me on an E3 sheet. Please label your name on the, uh, the, the file as well as on the bottom. You can see the naming conventions from some of the other homework you're, you're about to see. But I want you to do, so ultimately it's this, it's 10 references. This is breakdown, so 10 breakdowns. Let's use this new word here. 10 breakdowns and two paintings. So this is gonna be two into A3, one into A3. So two on one page and then five on each page for this one. Everybody good with that? This homework can be done traditionally or digitally, I don't mind either. But that's how, that's how we're gonna do stuff. Cool guys? All right, I think we're cool. Okay, delivery is in a week. So what's today, 20th, so 27th. That's next Sunday. And that's when we're gonna be meeting up. Sound good? Excellent. All right, homework time. Let's look at all of the beautiful work that you've done for me. And I think you guys have done a pretty good job. So we're going to be blazing through this super, super hot, super, super, super hot, super fast, super hot. Okay, here we go. Number one, Belgian dude. Let's go, man. Always happy to see your work. So very simple, right, guys? Homework should be very straightforward. I've given you the demo. All of this stuff is going to go up on YouTube, so you'll know where to find it. I think you're going to be doing quite well for me this week. Okay, Belgian. Um, okay, let's go ahead and start. Go with this this one over here. Overall impression, not too bad. Uh, some slight queries that I have. For example, this particular one is made from the same exact material. I have to ask a question, which is, if this is going to be my half tone, why is the half tone so far removed? from this particular area in the dark. So you might be considering to light this from the left hand side, in which case your cast shadow is a little bit questionable, but maybe I can accept it. But even if I did, the big logical problem here is how on earth is a value that's this dark coming from a value that's this, this much in the light. Again, a deviation from halfway to black here. So you might say, James, well, listen here, bucko. It turns out that this, this sphere has a light face here and it's, it's completely darker on the ring. Maybe so, but I don't believe that was your intention. So be careful, maintain the logic because of this is going to be a value in the light. This has to be somewhat close to it, right? Unless you're dealing with the reflective surfaces, this is not very possible in reality. And we, we said matte, matte objects, right? So be careful about the principle over there. So again, this would be much closer. So if we can do a little bit of creative painting on top of this. Witness the glory of my wonky ellipses. Get this down here. It's okay, I snip and I snap. I whip and I whap. And eventually we get something that's a hodgepodge. 
combination of stuff and I'll lower this value now you see how that looks more natural to us now because again we expect relationships right certain relationships so maintain that otherwise pretty okay um okay shadows all right I can accept that Maybe a little bit more gradation with the specular light. Maybe don't forget it in areas like this. But overall, I think it's pretty okay. Uh, this could be gradated better. Remember our technique here, right? So let me quickly erase this and I'll show you one more time. So don't be afraid, and this is the way I do it. So I'll just go over this for a second. So the way I do highlights, remember guys, you need to gradate everything. Gradation is how you make things look realistic. Everything around you is gradated. So, how I do this is I go to a new layer, I grab my opacity brush, I grab the highlight value, I paint it in. Just like you did. On a new layer, just paint it in, I don't mind. I grab my airbrush, I set it to erase mode, and I erase both, both corners. So, it gradiates in. Let me just quickly change the size of this gradiates in and it gradiates out and that's way more comfortable it's comfortable to the eye compared to, the, compared to what was there earlier right that's how i comfortably get highlights because highlights are gradiated remember they're not stark they're gradiated same thing over here i think a pretty consistent mistake so make use of the airbrush erase to gradiate your highlights okay otherwise we're in pretty good standing man some of these are pretty good okay decent job what's next we have your page of cones very cool yeah okay some of these are acceptable i wish there was a bit more variation in local value for your own learning but i can accept this page yeah not too bad some slightly questionable decisions with car shadow there maybe maybe slightly higher specular there but overall it looks quite round maybe i'd like you to be less selection heavy on the edges don't be so crazy stiff remember i intentionally went around my drawing that I just demoed and I ensure that the edges are not super super harsh very important to make things look a bit more natural and already that's helping already that's helping so a bit more natural a bit more natural if you guys are wondering what I'm doing I'm just painting the background value in with a low opacity brush just to make it a bit more natural to the eye otherwise decent job maybe contact shadows missing here that's why it looks a bit awkward and don't forget contact shadows please so this was in our cube, our cube demo. Remember that it's going to be in every single object that you do that's grounded. So don't forget to put in this little shadow here on the bottom. Of course, put it with an airbrush. I'm just going to do it very quickly with a round brush. But you get the idea, you see how much that helps. Right, so I go back and forth. So before and after, and you see how much that helps, right? It's grounded. Small contact shadow, really, really important. Otherwise, decent job. Well done. Okay, next player, that's Belgian there, at the top of my homework. We got Cap with a couple of submissions, these ones look pretty good to me. Alright Cap, what you got? Quite nice, quite nice. Good presentation, good layout. One thing that I want to tell you Cap is that I'd like you to be a little bit less heavy-handed with this background variation. I really enjoy the fact that you're doing it, and I think you see how much it helps your presentation. So Cap's putting this airbrush dark behind his whites to make the whites pop a bit more. I think we can stand to be a little bit less harsh with this change. If you just made ex extra effort to just grady that with the background, you see what I'm doing here? I'm making sure that that transition of light and the transition of dark is just a little bit more unified with the background. I think it helps to have a much better presentation because the viewer wants things to be clear, but sometimes the viewer doesn't want it to be want it to be like bashed over the head with the idea. So maybe something like this helps your presentation because before it was a bit too distinct. It's like, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. No, no idiot, look at this. But when you add something like that, it's like, hey, beautiful, handsome, look at this, would you? Look at how beautiful it is. So it's a question of communication. This background shading, and I think a couple of other people have made this mistake. Don't go so harsh with it, okay? So grady that with the background. Make it magic. So this is this stuff is done all the time, and I can show you how I've done it in mine. 
like all throughout this there are minor shading that's happening behind the drawing but you can't even see it because i haven't given the goose up but you're kind of giving the goose up here so be careful with that okay other than that your technique's okay some questionable stuff over there but i think i can see a reason why that would be possible otherwise good tangential lighting maybe a little bit too harsh with your bounce light here please make sure you gradiate right because you you seem to have a good command of gradiation be consistent with that otherwise i like the value the value variation maybe a core shadow a touch too harsh i like your value choices they're quite nice be slightly harsh with the core shadow so don't be afraid to just go one step deeper and just say you know what let's make sure that you're a little bit better integrated okay so you go here go here looks a little bit better right and again maybe one step more and things aren't as harsh anymore big difference even though it's a small change a big difference to me in my eye otherwise your bounce lights pretty consistently are pretty harsh so be careful about that gradient your bounce lights a bit more otherwise you're pretty good to go man not bad at all let's check your cylinders i'm sorry your cones really quickly very comfortable i gotta say very comfortable some of this i really like right there right there quite nice quite nice some slight questions with your cast shadow remember the logic if something is not in shadow it can't cast shadow so your shadow will be more like that so shadows are casted so it really would be like this maybe i'll take an extra class on shadow projection for cones but the simple logic here is that if something is not in shadow it can't cast shadow so you can't have shadows coming from the light they come from the dark okay uh otherwise same mistake over here so this is a very consistent mistake please take this into account so shadows they need to come from the form shadow okay this one looks fine because you obeyed that looks fine because you obeyed that looks fine because you obeyed that so you kind of know it slight adjustment beyond that i'm happy with what i see pretty decent presentation maybe again the core shadow same problem a little bit of gradation would be nice and again bounce light same problem a bit of gradation would be nice to improve your presentation but overall quite nice good job all right let's keep moving what's next up on the line we have rico what do you have for me rico okay pretty okay so far uh, i think some of the technique is being taken into consideration i would definitely um look at the previous guy's homework just in terms of just raw contrast i think it could do better i think your choice of background itself could go a little bit darker or lighter just to contrast with the existing shapes that are on the screen in front of me but as far as the technique goes not too bad actually decent radiation uh maybe the highlight could be graded a bit more harshly that's okay though uh, but i think everything right now is a little bit too light so let's take the halfway to black into account for example if this is my shadow value here then this would be my appropriate if that was my floor value this would be my shadow value so i would have something more akin to this which is a nice comfortable shadow value right so that, kind of, that would add the sharpness that i kind of wish that this page had so don't forget to half fade to black the floor because i feel like that's something that's not been considered same critique as the previous guy don't be heavy handed with his airbrushing it tends to make your entire presentation weaker so be subtle with it i'd be subtle because i can achieve the exact same effect with barely any of the same heavy handedness right nice and subtle nice and graceful okay pretty cool otherwise technique is okay maybe a touch more contrast would be nice maybe a little bit more gradation on the core shadow so very similar mistakes as the previous guy maybe more variations in local color but overall i'm pretty okay with this it's not too bad for right now i think you're ready to progress to the next one okay so remember what i said about the the floor value so same issue over here the shadows will be darker halfway to black your shadows and make sure that the overall background value is not so close to the values i see on my on my actual objects right so i've seen you, you're trying to fight that off with this airbrush don't even try to fight it off choose a different background value so it's well contrasted okay because again you're in charge of this you had charge of your layers so let's try to make sure that our, our shadow value over here is not so similar to our background value over here for better contrasting okay beyond that i feel like your presentation is kind of hit hard by that decision making but i think it's okay some of this stuff is a little bit questionable try and stick with standard lighting 
because to get a lighting like that, this would have to be a light source. That one I think should, you should bin. Not quite uh, up to expectation. Uh, for this one over here, try to keep in mind the contour we're going for. So this is okay for angle angular um, cones. I think it's not too bad. But again, kind of remember that the, the actual contour is more, it's more like that, right? It's more straight up. But not too bad. I think it's acceptable. Stuff like this, remember, if you don't show me value change, you can't show me the change in form. So whenever something looks a bit too flat, that should be a red flag at the back of your head. So be careful. Try and show me things that are closer to this. This is hitting the money a bit more, where there's a clear distinction between light and shadow. Again, over here, I don't see the bond slide too strongly, but it's okay on the borderline of acceptable. And I'm sure with some adjustments, looking at some of the other good homework, I think you'll be able to, uh, to provide me with... Um, work up to expectation i think you'll be fine but overall technique is okay you should be fine all right next person who do we have we have i'm just here to draw doing his first week homework okay acceptable let's see what we have okay pretty okay first impression is not too bad i see a consistent issue let me have a drink of water please okay the issue is communication. So if I take this one over here, and if I take this one over here, you see that the values are starting to blend in with each other, which is affecting your communication. Remember, the clarity is a really, really important thing to achieve, and that's one of the reasons why something like this looks way better than something like this, because over here, this value and this value are blending together. So I would really like you to be a little bit more careful. So once you've made your decisions on your canvas and you've done your gradation, always take a step back and take into account what you just accomplished and ask yourself is this clear like is this okay is this is this distinct from my viewer because sometimes it's not in which case make a slight change like this and suddenly we're miles better right simply adjust what we have right from that to that and we do so much better your technique is good you can be a little bit heavy-handed again with this background this is quite nice so again a good example for everybody else in the class nice subtle use not so subtle but it's enough it's okay acceptable but i think your communication could be stronger so choose those values better again same issue over here it's a consistent issue so this could be a bit more separate than this i understand that they're both in the lights but again when you're doing your painting imagine if this was your face and you can't just say okay well i can't show the contour on the nose because it's the same value as the contour on the cheek you want to have liberty i want you to have practice with this idea of subtly manipulating things to ensure the communication is always solid okay i think that's the one major issue with your with your work so choose those values better again same mistake over here pretty consistent same mistake over here make sure that the edges or the, the individual sides are well contrasted okay because again we want to be able to pick that out as a viewer that's why this and this to a certain extent looks better than this and this that's why this looks flat and that looks three-dimensional okay but beyond that, you know what you're doing. I'm happy with what I see. Next up, we go with Crafty. Good job, man. Pretty goddamn good. So be careful with that presentation, okay? Let's communicate what we want to communicate. We've got Crafty Spheres. This one I've already reviewed in private, but uh, you've heard what I had to say about this. So pretty good technique. Again, same issue with the background. The next time I teach background, I'll be sure to mention this a bit more, but let's be more subtle. Okay, we can be a bit more subtle with the background. The core shadow is a little bit too strong, so gradient that slightly. Okay. Beyond that, I think this is a pretty good page. You already heard what I had to say about this, so I'm fairly happy with this page. Again, core shadow maybe a little bit more gradation. Don't be so harsh with this painting in the background, but you're good to go. Maybe the edges are a little bit too sharp for my liking, but beyond that, you've done a great job. There's not much I can say about this that I haven't already. So good job, Crafty. I uh, I think this is a solid benchmark for homework. So great work. Not much to say, so we won't say anything. Next up, we have Crafty's cubes and cylinders. So same person. All right, Crafty, what have you done here? Actually, I think that's uh, I I brought in somebody else's. Okay, that's actually that's that's Lauren's cone homework. Okay, this is Crafty's cube homework. I've reviewed this already. Be a bit careful with the decision making. Make sure that this this shadow over here is halfway to black. 
it's a little bit far from halfway i'm gonna be honest so be a little bit careful about that i think the appropriate shadow value will be something more akin to this you see that's way more natural so, so don't think that just because your object is darker your shadows need to be darker not the case the shadows are going to be determined by what it's, it's being casted upon not what's casting to a certain extent so just by paying that roughly you're going to see how much more comfortable that becomes in our view but yeah i think i've reviewed this already good job good job good job with the edges specular technique overall values yeah it's a good page no much not much to say about that besides keep going so good job with that all right we got lawyer ruins stuff now we got a page of cubes i'm sorry a page of cones and a page of cylinders okay this is good work i appreciate this um is there anything that you're missing maybe you've already seen me demo the highlight already a couple of times your highlights could be a little bit less scraggly scraggly i think you could be more confident with that and also don't forget the highlight on the tip of this cone here the tip of the um the edge here so it's gonna be a highlight across so don't forget this thing over here really important to sell the design okay your technique looks okay maybe your car shadows could be a bit better so don't be afraid of looking into airbrushing uh, i think you asked a question earlier today right so you can use your airbrush if you'd like to you can use your gaussian blur if you'd like to totally okay just give me some comfortable shadows stuff like uh, like this so i think i use gaussian blur for this and i think we'll be pretty good to go your background could be a bit better contrasted with what you presented to me but your technique some of the stuff is, looks quite nice really really good presentation yeah i'm okay with that again same issue with your communication so this is bleeding into this i don't like that so give this to me clearer okay if you need to make this entire face darker do so but you're slightly manipulating the fundamentals to tell me something clearly okay so clarity is what we're going for so let's try and be clear okay beyond that good page some of this is actually quite nice that's quite nice i like that a lot but that's your one major mistake okay we'll go on to your next page but everything is pretty well handled i think you did a good job you got a lot of good things from the uh from the class let's look at this really quickly okay cones not too bad this one over here problem is is that your core shot is not strong enough so your communication gets a little bit muddled so make sure you have nice strong core shadows because remember that big shape is going to tell you exactly how something is shaped so even if you do all the gradation in the world if you lose that in that big core shadow your communication is going to be explicitly affected so stronger clearer core shadows okay don't have what proko calls dirty lights so clear core shadows okay let's be more distinctive that's why i think i liked one of your this one's also pretty okay but the reason that's okay and the other ones are not is because you have a nice distinct understanding of the core shadow over here so be much more decisive have that clarity between your shadow and your lights okay but your technique is pretty good again same issue with the highlights your shadows are better on this page maybe a bit more softness would be nice but other thing is your consistent issue uh even if you change this it's going to strengthen your work immensely so be stronger and bolder with your core shadows okay don't have dirty lights on your page so that you can look at the proco video i believe somebody linked it in the chat earlier you can look at that video it's going to help you out okay great moving on we have ruse cubes i think i've run through this with her in private already but we can look at it for the benefit of the class i don't know how big this file is but it's lagging my photoshop or my creator rather okay this is a great page this is a really good really really good page she spent a lot of time on this and it shows so good handling of edges good handling of highlights a great benchmark page right so what i'll do for you guys' benefit is the really good pages the ones that i want you to look at i'll put it up pinned on my classwork in my classwork room on the discord so you guys will be able to see this um uh, a bit more clear so you can always go back to this for um for benchmarking maybe a little bit harsh again with this background stuff i'll remember i'll, I'll keep it keep this in mind to um to not make the mistake of not mentioning this earlier but be careful with this presentation um don't be so heavy-handed with the background you don't need that much some slight perspective issues that's okay but yeah as far as a cube page pretty good pretty goddamn good page of cubes excellent job 
Again, issue with the logic here, with the shadows. So ensure that you don't have the logical issue of the shadow cast. This may, it's going to be like that instead of what you just painted. Remember that you cannot cast from light. You always cast from shadow. This is okay. Again, same mistake over here. Much more like that. It's more appropriate. So check the shadow logic one more time. We should be okay. All right, moving on. Pretty goddamn good page, besides the shadow casting. We got Salty Seagull, one of my star pupils. Yeah, what can I say, man? Good stuff. I really enjoyed this one. Well handled, well executed, good stuff. Contact shadow, highlight. I think a highlight could be graded a bit better, honestly. Um, maybe I don't like the fact that it's almost the same value all throughout, so slight more just a little bit more gradation on your highlight might be uh, better for your presentation but overall very nice very nice page i i quite like this not much to say you're totally ready for today's assignment which is the primitives you're gonna do a fantastic job yeah i like what i see it's good stuff very very good stuff this is really nice so now a slight little thought about ambient occlusion i see it but now with ambient occlusion knowledge it'll be even better It'll be even stronger the connection between this and this because right now you see this kind of floats on top of this despite it having a cast shadow because of the lack of ambient occlusion so now that you're equipped with that you're going to be even more deadly but fantastic job really good job uh, salty really enjoy this page yeah cones very consistent very strong still yeah not much to say just really 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 solid job yeah well rendered well rendered you put the time into it i see all of the contour lines yeah, really, really good page. Fantastic work. Not much to say. All right, we got Sugary Cane. Up next, page of cubes, page of cylinders, page of cones. Let's see what you have for me. Okay, uh, let's go with the cubes first. Yeah, not bad. Maybe a little bit airbrushy, but I think it's okay. Uh, maybe I don't like all these lines. Might be an artifact from your line drawing, but overall not too bad. Perspective issues. Like I said, drawing is key to this class. I don't teach drawing. I teach I just painting parts, so the drawing is on you. If I can help you, I will, but again, be a bit careful with that. Go back to your fundamentals if you're struggling with boxes. That's, that's based on a priority list, of course. But this is an acceptable page. I don't think you're going wrong in too many areas. Your shadow casting logic is pretty decent. I wish it wasn't so airbrushed. I wish your edges weren't so perfect. So go back to the lesson and listen to the part where I talk about edges and the edge thickness. I think it'll help your presentation a bit more. But overall, not a bad page of cubes. Pretty okay. I think sufficient for us to move on. Let's go to your next page. Let's use your cylinders. This one I feel like is getting a little bit too dirty. I think we could stand to be way cleaner with our presentations right now. I mean, I appreciate it do you, they're going all the way up to um, up to the uh, material level. But again, this material level is suffering from the fact that your regular cylinders maybe aren't as strong as they need to be. So please consider your bounce light, grady that better. The drawing itself I think could be better, so it's not so wibbly wobbly. Stuff like highlights, much more distinctive decisions please would be nice again the shadow value a little bit too far removed for it to be possible so remember halfway to black and try not to blend things together because there's no way that this and this are going to be the same exact value unless this this uh, cylinder was the exact same value as the background so a little bit more care would be nice with this page there's a little bit more care i think it's a bit too half a start put together spend more time Spend more time, give me a better page. Cones kind of similar. I feel like you're jumping to fancy things too quickly. Because you, you're you struggling to give me an actual cone that is like well done all throughout. Like I've yet to see one solid cone in the whole presentation. So I want you to take one step back. We can do the cool stuff later and I guarantee you we're going to do a lot of cool stuff. But one step back, okay? Um, so we're actually getting the fundamental we need to because we're missing contact shadow. 
the shadow value is incorrect, right? We're missing highlights properly, good gradation is not there. So a lot of things I think could be benefited by you just giving me a basic page. Let's not go crazy. Let's do the simple stuff and do it well, okay? And I think that's probably going to be the recurring theme between the, these two presentations. So be a bit careful with this stuff. Don't go crazy just yet. Because if you, if you gave me a solid cylinder like uh, the previous guy did, like Salty did, I would have no issue accepting this stuff. But the reason this stuff looks bad is because this stuff looks bad. So be careful. Take your time. Follow the steps. You'll get a result, okay? That's not too, too much of an issue. I know you can do it. We have Suave next. A couple of pages. Okay, nice job, man. Another really, really good uh, couple of pages. Fantastic work. Careful with your bounce side, okay? Let's not have it be too harsh. Some gradation will be better with the presentation. Highlights look good. So Suave is doing something that um, Salty didn't do, which is completely gradiate the, uh, the highlight, which is why it looks so good. So great job on the highlight. Maybe a little bit more gradation on the bounce side again would be nice. Yeah, but I like what I see. It's a good presentation. Careful with the background stuff again. I think this is a consistent issue. So next time I teach this class, I'll be sure to mention that earlier. So be a bit more subtle with the background. But I think you're pretty good to go with this. Also, don't, don't forget for stuff like this, don't forget the background, please. So after I do all this stuff, I will also change the background on this piece to ensure that this presentation is really strong. So I add like darkness behind this stuff. You kind of get the idea, right? I don't think you need me to tell you that. Be a yeah, great page. Really, really strong page over here. Not much to say. For this one, remember that if you don't show me gradation, it it just looks flat. So if you if you want this to be like um like a like a sphere with a flat bottom, you've convinced me. But if it wasn't a flat bottom, you haven't convinced me. Okay, so remember, the more gradation, the more change in form. But as far as your technique goes, it's awesome. Really, really good stuff. So nice handling of the core shadow. Maybe a little bit more would be nice, but still good technique. You're taking your time. Your contours look good. I think a similar consistent problem, right? Over here and over here and over here. So as you go to the very tippity top, I want a little bit more gradation. Okay, just a little bit more to actually see that sphere through because right now you're showing me something like this from contour from the um, from the right side for example it looks like this to me so if you want to avoid this make sure you have a little bit more of that gradation towards the top okay but otherwise i can't fault your technique very nice job really good stuff keep it going i hope you enjoy this week's assignment good stuff man we have yabu next All right, perspective issues, but the technique I think is acceptable. Yeah, not too bad. A little bit too messy. I'd like the gradation to be a little bit more standard because light radiates from one direction. So be a bit careful about that. The shadows look a little bit too dark for my taste and they are too dark. So remember halfway to black, halfway to black the, um, the floor to get the appropriate shadow value. Occlusions are okay, not too bad. I'm glad you're thinking about that. Bounce light could be better gradiated. A common theme you see so don't worry about making mistakes guys you see that you all made very similar mistakes and trust me i've made the mistake and i made it worse and longer than you have so don't worry about that stuff it's all going to be fixed with a matter of time and effort yeah but beyond the messiness i think good communication i see a nice one two three for most of these maybe, maybe these are getting a bit too close for my taste this one and this one but overall pretty decent job not much to say Hope you have good luck with the cylinders and the cubes. I'm sorry, the cylinders and the spheres and the cones. Pretty good job on that one. I think we're missing Crazen's homework. I know it's somewhere in here. Uh, let me quickly check my DMs because I know that he doesn't like to put in the classwork. But I think he's the last guy that I have to go through. If I've missed you for whatever reason, please, if you're in the chat or if you see this in the VOD, just DM your homework and say, James, you old man, you, you and your failing glaucoma vision, you've missed my homework, please review it and I'll review it for you. Don't worry about that. I want you guys to improve. I want you guys to beat me. I want you to be better. Um, okay, I don't see Crazen's homework in my DMs clearly. So maybe I'll just come back to him one on one. But that's it for our homework, guys. Hopefully you guys all learned something from the guys that have uh, participated in the class. Again, 
If you want to see the homework for the previous classes, all my classes are linked in the playlist in my channel or in my corner. So you can go to the James Patel YouTube channel or look at the James corner on the Discord. Exclamation mark Patel to get into my class and then just look at my YouTube channel, which is just James Patel. If somebody could link that for me, that'd be great. I appreciate you always. And you can check the playlist for all of the previous classes. This, this particular class is going to go online very soon. But again, we go back to the homework. Homework for this week, give me 10 breakdowns and two paintings. And that's so fun because the distance between doing something like this and doing a full painting, you're almost all of the way there. And that's crazy, man. It's been like four weeks. And you can almost paint anything you'd like. Not entirely true, but mostly true. Okay? So give me two paintings, two full paintings, and give me ten breakdowns. Any final questions, guys, before we call it a day? Oh, I think uh, Cyber Daddy has his homework that, he, that I may have missed. So let's get that in here as well. Sure, we can go to that before we leave. And you guys can put in some questions while I crit this. And otherwise, we are pretty much done for the day. And this was fun. Okay, I already like what I see. I don't think I'll be spending too much time on this one. Okay, Cyber. So what do we have over here? So, first of all, great technique. Very, very smooth stuff. I don't know if there's too much airbrush softbrush going on here, but you know what you're doing. Things are quite, uh, quite appealing to look at. Are you making any major mistakes? The only one that I can point out, the big one that's kind of giving me issue, is that your edges are too perfect. This is actually a legitimate concern because I want you to be able to have control over organic form and hard surface. And even when things are hard surface, they're not that hard surface, right? To be almost look, it almost looks like a 3D render. So be a bit careful, right? So I'm sure this was done with selection tool or something of the, of the sort. So don't be afraid to go back in there and mess this up slightly, okay? Because it really, really does help the presentation. I can't stress this enough, because when you do these organic looking paintings, like that, this and this is a lifetime away from me in terms of my eye. Okay, so be less perfect with the edges. If you have to add an extra step of edges, please do so. Highlight looks pretty okay. Could be uh, greedy to better, but I see that you know how to do that from this. That's why it looks pretty good. Cash out of value seems comfortable to me. Okay, decent casting. Decent bounce light. I think this might be an artifact from your, from your airbrush. Be a bit careful about that. Please, if it looks a little bit awkward, which I'm telling you that it does, go back in there with a the round brush and fix it up a little bit. Make sure that I see nice stripes like I do on the top, on the bottom, so that way the contour is being respected. Otherwise, very comfortable. Good choice of values, decent presentation. Yeah, so you see how um, they worked over here? Nice and subtle, right? So this is how you should handle your backgrounds. Don't be too heavy-handed, guys. You don't need to. Subtlety is key. Okay, but great page. Really, really solid work. Again, some slight communication issues over there, but not too bad. Just be a bit careful with your value selection in the future. But yeah, doing good, man. Doing good. I like what I see. Cones. Okay, not too bad at all. I am okay with this, for the most part. Some slight issues with these more complex forms, because again... You realize that when you can't show the big core shadow, it's hard to communicate stuff. So sometimes when I have weird angles, I actually forcefully ensure that um, I can somehow show you a contour line using my shapes. So for this particular case, what I would do, if I were you, is I would just use the, the ambient light and I would create shapes on both sides, you see? So something like this, where if I can use my pen here really quickly. Okay, so I would probably draw, take a light from this side and take a light from this side and I would I would draw them in tangentially just like we lit the cylinders before I would show the form using these techniques so not the exact same value of course I'm just drawing the shape for you but I would show it like that and that's how I would show the, the, uh, the conical form better because you've tried the solution here and it doesn't really work because I can't see the, the entire contour so if I had to show a cone in this position I would just imagine there to be lights on both sides, small lights, not as strong as this light, and I would light it that way, okay? And that's how I would show you the form. Because remember, I'm about communication, right? I don't care about just sticking to what I have. I will do whatever I need to, to show you the form. That's the purpose of clarity, right? That's, that's what we do when we want to show things clearly. 
So I think that's how I would problem solve this. And I'm sure with your technique, you'll have no issue. That looks quite nice, nice and comfortable right over there. Yeah, pretty goddamn good page. I think you're, you're going to do just fine for the next assignment. You're going to be really, really good. So great job. All right, I like what I see. All right, guys, let me check for your questions before we call it a day. Um, is there, there's no info for tipping James for the classroom? Uh, I guess there isn't. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta handle that in my own time, I guess. But, um, my PayPal is this, if you're curious. That's my PayPal. Um, but I'll, I'll handle that in the, in the, in the future. But don't worry about that. We're all about disseminating some good information here. Are we including the refs in our homework? That would be nice. Yes, that would be nice uh, if you include the refs. I don't care either way, though. Also, please, guys, uh, I don't think I mentioned this before, but please make sure that when you're lighting this stuff, I don't want to see exactly the same lighting. Like, remember when I did this for you, I did this without looking at the reference. I can go back. And can you see something kind of cool here? Do you see these shapes? Do you see how familiar they look already? Isn't that cool? Because this is you. This is basically you. Because what I just did, you can do. And this is from imagination. And that's the point of this class, right? Do you see that light and that shadow on there? Do you see this light and the shadow on here? That's the point, right? That's what we're trying to go for. But please don't have the reference open when you do your lighting. It should come from you, okay? Later on, later on, we can use the reference in tandem. But I want you guys to learn. I want you guys to be better than me. So don't have the reference open. Get your drawing. Toss this in the garbage and then begin your painting. And sl slowly but surely, you'll be able to get exactly what you need to out of your work. Sound good? Okay, great. So include the reference if you want. I'm not going to make it a rule though. Because again, I want this to look solid. I want you to paint this using all that you've learned so far. And I know you can do it because it's not a big jump. It's not a big jump. All right, you guys good? Everybody all right? All right, cool, guys. Thanks so much for listening. I'm going to cue the ending on my Twitch stream. The VOD will be up on YouTube as soon as I can upload it. But I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully you had a good time with me. And I will see your homework, and I will see all of you in the next week. Cheers.